Thanks everybody for joining today. Uh, what we'd like to, to talk to you today about is a couple different areas. Um, obviously in the area of uh, mobile backhaul or cell tower backhaul and, and also about connection oriented ethernet which is a technology uh, that's ideally suited for, uh, for cell tower backhaul. So with that, we'll just jump right, right in here. Um, I think uh, one of the things about um, mobile backhaul networks today is they're predominantly delivered using, again, we're talking more on the data side, which is where the backhaul problem is, uh, delivered using Ethernet over Sonnet technologies. And, and you hear lots of bad things about Sonnet. You know, it's not efficient, it's not packet friendly, et cetera, et cetera. But why do people use uh, Ethernet over Sonnet? Uh, I mean, everybody's using it. There, there must be really compelling reasons for that. So let's just take a look at a couple of things here. So when you look at using carrier Ethernet, you know, carrier Ethernet generically for backhaul, carrier Ethernet can be implemented with lots of different uh, technologies. You, you can build a switched or connectionless Ethernet backhaul. You can do Ethernet over MPLS, Ethernet over Sonnet, or connection-oriented Ethernet just to name a few of the different implementations of carrier ethernet. So, the, so what happens is if you can have all of these for a carrier ethernet backhaul, when you look at each of them in particular, you find that they vary quite drastically in terms of their capabilities. So QoS performance, so packet latency or packet loss, the way that's managed and controlled and bounded in the different technologies is done differently. And, and certain ones, it lends itself more favorably than others. Some it's inherently built in, others you have to apply different protocols, et cetera, to make it work. There are things like network availability, you know, how do you get the quote 50 millisecond uh, protection restoration, you know, kind of uh, defined by Sonnet. And it, is it a protected technology or, or an, an unprotected technology that you're, you're uh, using there? How do you get bandwidth assurances? You know, how do you guarantee, can you guarantee the bandwidth or is it just, best effort or you know, can you guarantee it or is it statistical? Uh, and so the different technologies will do, do that differently and be able to offer guaranteed or not guaranteed. And then finally, network security. So the different implementations have different implications of security. And so what I wanted to do is we're gonna cover during this session is some of the, the, um, the implications of this and why connection-oriented ethernet is ideally suited for this uh, particular area. But getting back to the original question, why Ethernet over Sonnet? Why do people use it? Well, because it just works. You don't lose any sleep at night. Uh, when you put an Ethernet over Sonnet network in, it just works. It's secure. Your bandwidth is guaranteed. And, and, and so it's a safe choice. So you always want to take the least common denominator. Uh, you know, not a lot of work to do. So what I'd like to do now is introduce you to, to connection-oriented Ethernet. Actually, before I begin, uh, anyone have, have heard of connection-oriented Ethernet before? Just a quick show of hands here. Or you probably have heard it in its various forms, but okay. So what I'd like to do is just cover some of the basics of connection-oriented Ethernet, what it is and, and how it's implemented. So what connection-oriented Ethernet, what, it was defined um, you know, probably on the order of about 10 years ago now in, in various flavors. But what it did is it took connectionless Ethernet or e switched Ethernet that you know very well from your Ethernet LAN, you know, enterprise LAN technologies, uh, where you have very good uh, aggregation and stat muxing, you know, very granular bandwidth, et cetera, and it and it merged that to all those sort of uh, bedrock capabilities that you have with Sonnet in terms of you know high performance, precision, deterministic QoS, you know, where you can you have a bounded delay. Uh, you have, the, this is where the five nines of availability comes from in the Sonnet world. And, and also because Sonnet's a layer one service that has high security. And so by, by taking those two technologies or, or taking the, 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 uh, the benefits of those two technologies and putting them together and, and hence connection oriented Ethernet was born. And so what it, what it does is it takes all of those benefits of Ethernet, the flexibility and scalability in particular, but with the really performance and reliability and security that you gain with Sonnet or SDH uh, types of technologies. So um, just going a little bit further along in terms of frequently asked questions of connection-oriented Ethernet, since only a few people showed hands of understanding it, it's actually an umbrella term in the industry. It's been tracked by industry analysts for the last couple of years, um, but the technologies themselves have been around probably on the order of about 10 years now. Now, connection-oriented Ethernet, some people say, well, is that carrier Ethernet or is that a form of carrier Ethernet? And, and the answer is yes. 
And, and the way I like to describe it is connection-oriented Ethernet is, is a very high-performance uh, implementation of carrier Ethernet. It's based on a number of industry standards from the Metro Ethernet Forum, IEEE, ITUT. And, but, you know, as standards evolve, there are always value-added enhancements that, that uh, are, are added. And the other thing about connection-oriented Ethernet is it can be implemented using Ethernet-centric technologies or MPLS-centric technologies, and I'll cover that in a little more detail in a, in a bit. So the different approaches to connection-oriented Ethernet really depend on what problem you're trying to solve. So the MPLS-centric approach to COE, uh, you can implement it using static pseudo-wires, or originally it was implemented with a technology called TMPLS, and now that's being standardized in the ITF and IEEE uh, and referred to as MPLS uh, traffic pro with a traffic profiler, MPLS TP. The, uh, the Ethernet centric approach, originally Nortel uh, deployed uh, a technology called PBT, Provider Backbone Trans Transport, and then VLAN tag switching was another way of implementing it. Now, PBT had been replaced by PBBTE out of IEEE. And so you may have heard that uh, in, in the industry as opposed to connection-oriented Ethernet. But that's just the, the more the data plane technology used for that. And then VLAN tag switching, Fujitsu has implemented a technology called Ethernet tag switching, which, so, which solved a lot of the scalability challenges uh, with, with uh, VLAN tag switching. So if you take a look at these different implementations, uh, with the MPLS-centric approach, you have three layers to manage. You have to manage the Ethernet layer, the pseudo-wire layer, and the... Um, uh, and, and the uh, LSP layer. So it's less optimal if you want to do pure Ethernet transport. It's more optimal for a multi-service transport. What I mean by multi-service transport, if you want to transport ATM and frame relay and Ethernet and other protocols, that's what MPLS is all about. It's optimal for multi-service, hence the name. Now, in, the, in, for, in particular, MPLS-TP, there are a number of standards that are under development. Some are being augmented uh, from, from what's available in the MPLS toolkit today. But the, the new area, the most, the most um, new and controversial area is in the area of OAM, or, or fault management performance monitoring or performance measurements, where MPLS, uh, there's two camps on this. The IEEE is, I'm sorry, the ITF is looking at one way of doing it. Uh, more of an MPLS-centric approach, where the ITUT was looking at more of an Ethernet-centric approach. So the two standards bodies are kind of battling it out. Uh, and, and it looks like we may actually have two standards for uh, MPLS OEM, which is unfortunate. Now, in the Ether Ethernet-centric approach, there's really one, one OEM layer to manage, and that's namely the Ethernet layer. It, it's less optimal for multi-service. You could do circuit emulation over it but it's really optimized for pure Ethernet transport, hence it's an Ethernet-centric technology. And it uses a whole toolkit of standards developed by the standards bodies that I, I previously mentioned that are all available today. So really, if you're looking at connection-oriented Ethernet, you have to think about what problem you want to solve. If you're just doing Ethernet backhaul, like for a mobile backhaul, uh, it's purely Ethernet in many cases, in which case the Ethernet-centric approach would be the ideal. Or if you're backhauling both your Ethernet uh, to your 3G and LTE base stations, plus maybe some legacy traffic, some T1s, maybe say, uh, T1s that you, you have ATM running over, uh, then maybe MPLS might be a, a more uh, well-suited approach. So connection-oriented Ethernet was designed to mimic Sonnet. So it makes Ethernet point-to-point. -point. Ethernet, by nature, is a multi-point technology. It makes it point-to-point -point like Sonnet circuits. You, you, you provision the Ethernet virtual connections across the network just like you do with sonnet circuits, and it eliminates the Ethernet control plane, so there's no spanning tree, there's no MAC address learning, and many of the other uh, layer two control protocols. It provides 50 millisecond path protection, so just like in sonnet where you have linear path protection, it gives you the 50 millisecond protection restoration. And then it provides fault management, so you can, just like you can do DS1 loopbacks to a smart jack, you can do Ethernet loopbacks and link traces. And finally, it provides guaranteed bandwidth through the network, just like you have with Sonnet. So taking Ethernet, all those benefits of Ethernet, making it more like Sonnet, which is very much trusted and desirable in the backhaul network today, but using a more packet-friendly technology is what connection-oriented Ethernet's all about. So why would we use this technology for mobile backhaul? So again, it makes Ethernet more like Sonnet, which dominates the networks today, and this is really important. So from a network operations procedure, you think about your network operations today doing Ethernet over Sonnet, 
all your OSS systems, all your technicians, all, all their support personnel are trained around Sonnet. They understand Sonnet, they know how it works, they know how to troubleshoot it. So connection-oriented Ethernet, a lot of the technologies are actually based on Sonnet and, and, and actually work in a very similar way. And so because of that, it fits very, much more nicely into, a, uh, into, the, into the operational environment uh, that's today used for mobile backhaul. It's also it's a highly scalable packet-centric technology because it is a packet technology, and it really meets that that uh, high scale requirement for mobile backhaul. And the other thing is it's supported over any layer one technology, so you can do connection-oriented Ethernet natively over fiber, or you can do it over Sonnet, or you can do it over WDM or OTN, etc. So it supports all these different layer one technologies. So some of the key attributes of connection-oriented Ethernet are the guaranteed bandwidth, so a committed information rate. Uh, it has consistent QoS performance, and it has high security. So because it uses very few protocols, fewer protocols means fewer security vulnerabilities. So that's a really good thing. And that's why Layer 1 technologies are very well trusted, because Layer 1 technologies do not, they use very few protocols. And again, connection-oriented Ethernet being modeled after that. So let's take a look through some of the attributes of connection-oriented Ethernet, and then we'll go through some, uh, some Ethernet over Sonnet use cases for that. So the, the, you've probably seen this circle before, the five attributes of carrier Ethernet as defined by the Metro Ethernet Forum. One of those is standardized services. Because connection-oriented Ethernet is a point-to-point -point technology, it follows the uh, Metro Ethernet Forum's E-Line, or e EPL and EVPL services, and the newly defined Ethernet access services, which are, uh, which are more for like wholesale access. It has the scalability of, of uh, layer two technology, so of Ethernet technology, of the scalability for aggregation and stat boxing. It provides the reliability, so you can get that 50 millisecond protection restoration like you have with Sonnet. And it also, you can provide port protection for your uni ports as well as your ENNI ports. It provides uh, bandwidth reservation, so that's how you guarantee your, your committed information rate. But it also has the lowest, pa you can engineer your network for lowest packet latency uh, and loss. And then finally, it has the full tool suite of uh, Ethernet OAM, so in the area of fault management and performance measurements as defined by the ITUT. Now, a sixth attribute that's added with connection-oriented Ethernet is, is the security aspect of it. And it's because it's purely a, uh, a layer two technology, but it also does not implement bridging that you have with switched Ethernet networks, you can't have denial of service attacks based on MAC addresses. And there's no IP protocols involved with the technology. So it's completely layer two, and so you, you're not really vulnerable to IP-based threats. So I wanted to spend just a, a moment on, on security because this is a, it's, it's a topic that's it's really important uh, for networks, but normally doesn't get discussed in, uh, in much detail. Uh, so in the area of security, so because there's no MAC address learning uh, with connection or an Ethernet because it disables bridging behavior, uh, you can't have MAC address spoofing, which is a way of an attacker can get into the network and basically put in a, a false MAC address and mimicking another MAC address and get access to the network. Also, you cannot have a denial of service attack. So a denial of service attack means someone attacks the network and that basically takes service away from other subscribers who are paying for service. So one common technique for a denial of service attack is you basically attack um, with, you keep uh, adding more and more MAC addresses to the network in which case uh, you get a table overflow, the memory overflows inside your network element, and that causes a system reset, and then you lose service until the system resets and relearns all the MAC addresses. So this, this behavior is not possible with connection-oriented Ethernet. Uh, there, it doesn't use spanning tree, so there are no protocol vulnerabilities there of getting den a denial of service attack for, uh, attack for spanning tree, and it doesn't use IP protocol, so it's immune to all those internet-based threats that we all, uh, we're all very well aware of. And then finally, as I mentioned um, earlier, because it, it uses very few protocols, more protocols means more vulnerabilities. And so fewer is, is better. 